For the video today, I am going to be talking to you about the whole experience of having uh, gender confirming surgery in Thailand. And I'm not so much going to be talking about the, the medical side of things and the surgical side of things, more to do with um, the, the whole experience of going to a foreign country, of being in Thailand, tell you a little bit about the temperature, things to do, places to see, um, and those kind of things really. So if that interests you and you want to find out a little bit more, carry on watching. I went out to Thailand in December of 2015. My surgery date was on December the 7th and then I stayed there right the way through to I think it was New Year's Eve and that's when I flew back to the UK. Um, I prepared for it all year and I'd watched loads of videos like this trying to get me better prepared for what to expect when I'm out there. So I just want to tell you a little bit about where you go and what Thailand is like and the, the heat and the weather and uh, the culture and those kind of things because if you are considering going to Thailand then you will encounter all of those. I have previous videos on my channel where I talk a bit more about going to see Dr. Suporn who was who I chose to do my surgery. He is a world leader in uh, gender confirming surgery and, and I had seen firsthand um, his results on a friend of mine and I was just blown away by it. But there are other surgeons out in Bangkok who are really good at what they do and I've heard equally really good things about them as well. So this is not sponsored in any way by any one particular surgeon. This is just literally uh, my experience. We flew from London in the UK and we stopped over in Dubai for an hour and then we flew on to Bangkok from there. Um, I think the whole flight duration was about 14 or 15 hours. It was quite a long flight, but we, we split us up into two flights, which made things a little bit more manageable. It was nice to actually get off the plane in Dubai, although we just had a look around the shops. It was quite an experience. Dr. Suporn um, works out of a city, I think it's a city, or it might be a, a large town, I'm not sure, but he works out of a place. Um, that is called Chonburi and Chonburi sits south of Bangkok and it's on the eastern coast of the Gulf of Thailand and it's kind of on the way from Bangkok through to Pattaya and it sits right on that major route between the two. You're met at the airport by um, one of the staff from the clinic in their little van and um, they pick you up and take you back to the hotel and get you checked in and everything. So you really are supported all the way along. Um, so you, there was no one time where I felt that I was kind of on my own and I didn't really know what I was doing. They, they kind of take care of everything for you and they've been doing this for a long time at that clinic. So they've got it off to a fine art, which makes all the anxiety and worry of going to a foreign country for surgery, uh, much less, which was so much appreciated. Bury itself, isn't a tourist destination. When I used to think of Thailand, I used to think of temples and beautiful sunny beaches, and, and you don't really get to see a great deal of that when you're there. Chonburi itself is a very commercial, quite industrial um, city, and although it does sit on a coastline, the coastline that borders it is kind of mangrove, and there's no actual beaches there, not that I saw anyway, um, but it's quite a large place, very busy place, very noisy, it's a little bit polluted if I'm honest with you, um, the hotel and the clinic are very close to this major road, um, and, and it's, it's very, very humid and hot. One of the great things, and this was one of the good things about seeing Dr. Sue Porn, was that the, his clinic and the hotel that you book into are just around the corner from each other. So that makes life really easy. And, and you don't have to walk straight out onto that main road to go from the hotel to the clinic. You, they, you can actually walk around um, a back alleyway and up through the entrance that way. It's, it's very, very convenient. Hotel, um, I think it's still called the Chon Inter. And it's quite a large hotel and it's got conference spaces and quite a nice restaurant, a nice foyer and the rooms are really quite nice. Um, 
you get a choice of two different types of room. You can either stay in um, a, a kind of standard room, um, which we did before I went into the hospital. So uh, the, 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 the week leading up to my surgery, uh, we stayed in a standard room for, a, actually it was about four days we were there. And it was nice and it was comfortable and the air conditioning is really cold, which really helps. Um, I did find it, it was a bit tatty in places. Um, some of the furniture was quite old. And, and one alarming thing I saw was between the, the bathroom and the, the the entrance to the room, so the little hallway that you have, there was a nail sticking up in the wood and I was walking around in bare feet so I nearly trod on that which was a relief I didn't but um, generally it was comfortable and okay for a standard room. After the surgery, um, because we'd had such a rough week, um, we decided to upgrade and go uh, to one of the upper floors. I think I got a feeling, I don't know why, I think it's the seventh floor. I think the standard rooms are on the third floor. I think the, the um, deluxe rooms are on the seventh floor. Um, they just generally um, decorated a bit more nicely, you have a better telly, um, it's carpeted, uh, whereas I think the other rooms were just like wood floor. I might be wrong, I can't remember exactly, but I know that it was just a better standard of decor in general. And the bathroom, rooms and the amenity kits were um, better appointed if you like they were just uh, you got more a little bit more up there and also uh, there was a nice foyer by the lifts on that floor where you could meet with the other girls just before dinner it's a good meeting point if you're gonna do anything with any of the other uh, guests who are staying there um, but you will find you will find that it's kind of how can I describe it? It's, it's kind of like a United Nations of trans women if you go to Thailand for surgery because so many trans women travel from all over the world to have their surgery done here. So I think during the time that we were there, there were women and there was a lady from Germany and her partner, South lady from South Africa, a girl from South America, um, Alaska, um, Canada, uh, the States generally, there was quite a few girls from the UK as well and, and it's just kind of really interesting to talk to everyone about their journeys and um, it's not the sort of experience you would have if you had the surgery done in your own country. <clears throat> The clinic is really well appointed as well. Uh, Dr. C. Porn has his own consulting rooms. The staff are so helpful and so friendly. And I, I read it before I went and I thought, oh, you know, they're probably quite, but they were actually really lovely. And they, they get you a drink and you sit down in the waiting area and there's like massage chairs and um, you just feel looked after. And, and when you're traveling all that distance to have such a major surgery, it's so, it's so appreciated. Uh, downsides to the clinic, um, I can't really find any if I'm honest. Um, there's a nice little garden at the back that you walk through um, if you come around the back way. Um, no, sometimes you're waiting a little while so when you go back for your reviews of Dr. Suporn um, you can wait around quite a bit for him to see the other girls so there's quite a bit of sitting around sometimes. Um, but otherwise, no, you get a drink and it's nice and cool in there. What's not to like? Talk a little bit more about um, Chonburi itself. We went over the Christmas period, so um, I got a sense when I was there that the whole Christmas celebration is very, very much a Western kind of celebration because the, the hotel had a big Christmas tree in the middle of it. Uh, the, the, the large shopping mall that's there, which I'll tell you a bit more about in a minute, uh, that had a massive Christmas tree and the whole shopping mall was decked out with decorations. But I just didn't feel the excitement and the whole build up to Christmas. It was just like this, it felt very Western. It felt like doing it for the sake of, that's what Westerners do. Um, <laughs> and it just didn't feel as authentic as maybe it would do in, you know, the, the, the States or the UK or Australia or countries that are very Roman Catholic uh, or Christian. We arrived when they were celebrating, I think the second or third day we were there, we arrived when they were celebrating Father's Day. And at first we hadn't realised that, we were just walking around 
uh, the city and having a look in the shops and going for ice cream and stuff and there was hordes of men and women we uh, dressed in yellow t-shirts and on the back it said cycle for dad and, and we went into and um, there's an ice cream parlor called Svensson's which is not far away from the hotel uh, sort of across the road and over a bit but um, it was full of the locals wearing these yellow shirts and, and what it was it was their father's day but with their father's day they celebrate uh, the king as such so it's not like you and I in Father's Day we just celebrate our dad their Father's Day is a, a real celebration of uh, the men in the family and also the king I think it only really lasted one day um, but it was really cool to see a different culture and how their celebrations are different from ours weather out there I think all times of the year be prepared for it to be extremely humid. You're looking at 80, 90% humidity. There's very little wind at all. It's the hotel and the clinic are very well um, air conditioned, as is the hospital. So when you go outside, it is like walking into an oven or a hairdryer. Um, you, you almost need gills to breathe. It is so humid sometimes. I think the hottest, the temperature that it got to was around about um, 44 degrees uh, one day and, and that was pretty unbearable. We did spend a lot of those days um, going out maybe more in the first thing in the morning or in the evening or we would stay in the hotel room in the air conditioning or just um, hang out with some of the other girls uh, in the foyer and stuff like that. But. Um, yeah, I mean, you're out there for quite a long time. Generally, it's about four weeks. Some people stay for about five weeks. Uh, and you, you're not always going to have loads and loads of things to do because essentially you're going out there for surgery and recovery. So it's not about uh, having a holiday or anything like that, um, which is a shame. But then saying that the whole kind of area where you have the surgery, it's not built for holidays anyway. There isn't huge amounts to do when you're in Chonburi uh, that you'll be able to do because post-surgery you're not going to be able to walk very far you'll get tired very quickly and it's very hot it's, the whole thing is incre you feel incredibly fatigued and drained all the time so you're not going to be going on massive excursions or anything like that you you might struggle to do that um, you spend a lot of time having a look around the local shops um, there is two shopping malls there there's a really big westernized shopping mall which is quite new and that is called the plaza and then that that is a cab ride away you can't really walk there it's far too it's far too far to go it's just uh it's definitely definitely need to take a cab and then there is one that's within walking distance and that's called the forum and that isn't quite anywhere near as good as the plaza. It was like the old kind of uh, shopping mall that they used to have there way back when and then the plaza took over and it's amazing. There is a department store in the forum. Um, it's not that great but there are bargains to be had there and I bought some um, gifts for some of my family from there as well so it's not too bad. It's all right for an afternoon's wander. The plaza is huge and it's on many different levels and there's so much to see there. Um, it is very much a westernised shopper's paradise and there's places as well where you can get cosmetic procedures done and, and I was a bit alarmed and dismayed I will say that there was I saw two or three clinics on one particular level of the, the shopping mall that was um, skin bleaching and they had like a before a before and after and um, it seems to be quite a thing out there to get your skin bleach um, and there was loads of places offering it which is I think a real shame because it's kind of this ode to western society that we must look more western but I, I wish in a way that they would they, they embrace their culture in other ways I wish they would embrace the way that they look because they're quite you know they're beautiful people um, but yeah there's lots of skin bleaching clinics there on the lower level there are some supermarkets and there's like this general little market area where you can get some really good um, 
I don't know, some really good dupe handbags and clothes and things like that. Some real kind of designer dupes. I got a handbag from there. It's meant to look like Gucci. Obviously isn't Gucci, but it's quite close. Um, and, and the food that they have in the supermarkets as well, it's quite westernised. There's a lot of American brands in there that you won't find in the UK. And the fruit is really lovely. And there's all these different flavours of chocolate and stuff that you you wouldn't find in the UK so it's you go on a bit of an exploration and find all these different things which is kind of exciting and that's fun. On the top floor there was I, there is a cinema on the top floor and we went out there when it was Star Wars The Force Awakens so we went and saw it while, while we were out there and they had a, an English showing so we didn't go out there and have Thai subtitles or it wasn't dubbed or anything they actually had an English language showing of the film and it was a huge theatre and I think there was 10 of us in there at most um, and that was really enjoyable so yeah that's that's on the top floor and otherwise there's a whole floor dedicated to restaurants uh, pizza, um, all of these kind of little funny buffet restaurants with fondue, different meats and cheeses and things like that, all kinds of interesting stuff to try out. When we talk about food, you can eat in the hotel there. We ate at the Chinese restaurant, there's a Chinese restaurant within the hotel. It wasn't very popular that the day that the evening that we went there and had something to eat, we were, myself and my partner were the only two people in the entire restaurant and the, the meal was it was good you know it wasn't sensational but the meal was good and the food was really tasty um, it was quite expensive um, I think no locals would be coming into this hotel to eat um, but it was okay you can eat at the large restaurant downstairs in the evening if you want to and it's a really good time actually to meet some of the other girls that are, and their partners and family that are there for the surgery um, it's really interesting to meet people from so many different places you know all together in one little hotel um, if you want to go outside of the, the hotel to eat which I would really recommend that you do um, we, there was a, a restaurant that was up a road just opposite um, we spoke to reception and we asked them where would a good place to go to to try out real Thai cuisine and they said this restaurant um, and it was it was a really busy little restaurant and it was full of people Thai local people um, we were the only Westerners in there and they didn't speak English so we were kind of like pointing to the menu and and doing that kind of thing and it was really delicious um, before I went I was concerned about eating street food and there are a lot in the evenings um, all the restaurants open out onto the streets. There are loads of street cafes that open up uh, once it gets dark. Because um, I think it's much cooler. Well, it's not a lot cooler then, but you haven't got the, the blazing heat of the sun on you. Um, and there is one just around, if you come out of the hotel and you turn uh, left and go around the corner, there is the Red Chair Restaurant, which if you've been to Chonburi and you, you will know what I'm talking about, um, the food in there is so yummy it is so delicious it is true thai cooking and it's mouth-wateringly good um, you have to wait quite a while for them to cook it and they're always so busy but you can sit there and eat it or you can get a takeaway and have it in your nice air-conditioned room or just take some and meet everybody downstairs it's just lovely so um no one was had a bad tummy or anything like that it was always really freshly cooked they did a particularly lovely pork dish as I remember and even thinking about it now I could just eat it it was so good it was so so good Dr Sue Porn's clinic will run a couple of excursions or he was doing that when I was there and um, the staff would take you either to Pattaya for the day which we didn't do they didn't run that one when I was there or they will also take you to Dr Sue Porn's beach house which is lovely and if you get the opportunity to do that I would absolutely recommend that you did go. Um, it's in a beautiful location, it's right on the Gulf, um, the sea is really warm, he has a private little bit of beach you can go out onto, it's like a little jetty, um, it's beautiful lush gardens with um, chairs. Oh dear, I hadn't long had surgery after we went on this excursion and 
it was just the best. I, I just lay down there in the shade. It was so warm and it was just what I needed. And then we have a barbecue and then inside there's lots of nice uh, cozy places to sit and then they laid on massages for us as well so on the first floor of the beach house itself which is a beautiful house um, you could either have a traditional uh, massage a deep tissue massage or you could have a traditional Thai massage and I went for the traditional Thai massage which was quite vigorous um, but lovely. Unfortunately it was only um, for the uh, patients, it wasn't for any of the family members um, so my other half didn't get to have a uh, massage but um, I did and it was awesome. So you, you spend all day at the beach house um, but one thing I haven't mentioned is um, I can't remember if we did it en route. I think on the way there we went to the Chinese temple which is just stunning so en route to the beach house you stop off at the chinese temple um it's a beautiful building it's pinks and reds and it's there's dragons and fountains a big pagoda um it is awesome to see and you spend about an hour there and there's loads of places to walk around you can go right into the temple we took loads of photographs um it was just wow absolutely wonderful so the main last thing i want to talk to you about and it's something probably a lot of you are very interested in after all it's the surgery is the hospital um the hospital was i don't know if i'm going to pronounce this right it was called um ache Chol one and dr sue Bourne's patients are up on the seventh floor i think i think i was in seven one two my room was seven twelve or was it 7.05? Oh, I can't remember now. Um, you have your own private room and the views that you get from his room is wow. You look straight across up the coast, right over the Gulf of Thailand and the sun sets. You face, where, you face west so you can see the sun set in. Um, it's quite magical. But then the night before surgery, you have to have an enema done and that really isn't magical at all. My partner um, stayed with me the whole time, so they put a, uh, a single bed, another single bed in the room, and he stayed with me for that whole week. Now, on hindsight, I think we wouldn't have done that because for Rob, it, he was so bored, um, and I was out of it quite a bit. I was sleeping a lot. Um, he was getting so tired because the nurses would, nurses would just come in at five in the morning, crash, bang, wallop, bang with the lights, all of the lights on. He would be fast asleep, wake him up as well, and they would do your injection, they would do your stats and everything. Um, they didn't just come in and put a little bedside light on or the little light above your bed on. No, it was wham, bam, in they came. And um, so that from that point, if you rob, didn't really get a lot of sleep. Um, so in hindsight, I definitely think if you are bringing a member of your family with you, it would be much kinder if they stayed on at the hotel and visited you every day and spent the day with you rather than being there every night as well. Because as nice as it was to have Rob there, uh, half the time I was out of it and didn't really know that he was there. He spent much of the time going out and just getting outside and having a walk around. Um, he went out towards the coast at one point, found himself at the start of these mangroves and something bit him <laughs> on the arm. And then it really got very swollen, very angry and um, Dr. Suporn gave him some antihistamine cream and it really calmed it all down. But um, yeah, if you are going with somebody, I would recommend, uh, unless you are really bricking it and you are totally scared of the surgery and you, and you have so many worries, even if maybe they stayed for you with you for a couple of nights, I, I don't think it's necessary for them to be there all the time that you're in the hospital. I don't think it's necessary and, and there's so little for them to do. And and anyway, um, the one of the nurses, one of your allocated nurses from the Sue Porn Clinic um, will stay with you overnight, the first night. They sleep on the settee in the room with you 
to monitor you and check you so that you know there's somebody in the room with you all night the first night after surgery so there will be somebody there anyway and the bed was not comfortable um the bed is super duper hard just to warn you now and being in healthcare in the uk i know that beds if you're going to be in bed for a long time cannot be that hard um, especially if you're not moving and if you've had your SRS you are not moving unless you are trying to go and use the loo you are not moving from that bed and it was so painful that I started to get backache and they do have mattress toppers if they've still got those awful mattresses on the bed in that hospital you can ask for a mattress topper and I highly recommend you do um, it doesn't make it a whole lot better, but it makes the unbearable bearable. I just remember the first night I lay on that bed and I was like, no way. I'm not going to be able to cope lying on this bed for a week. So if you've been and I've missed something out, or you know someone who's been and they've said other things, please let everybody know. Put a comment below. This was only my experience. So if you know anything different, I'm absolutely happy for you to put a comment down below. Please share with everybody else. As always, it's been a pleasure doing this video for you. Um, you may have noticed that I broke from tradition and did an ASMR unboxing on my previous video. If you haven't seen it, it will be linked up there or there will be a link to it in a second please go and show it some love i really enjoyed doing it um, and i'd really like to have some feedback on it um, anyway and um, that's the end of the video today if you liked this video please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and i will see you all in the next video until then take care